Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it is Wednesday, midweek, let's go. Paris, Tennessee, good morning. Vincennes, Indiana, good morning. High energy today, let's go. Benson, North Carolina, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Philadelphia, good morning. Dayton, Ohio, good morning. Nashville. Tracy in Nashville, Ethel in Memphis, good morning. Jonathan, good morning. Go Cavs. <laughs> we got a Cleveland person on here. Calumet Park, Illinois, good morning. Thank you for all the hearts. Appreciate it, thank you. Part four is Wonder Filled Wednesday. Okay. Kirsten Perry, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Bridget, right? Bridget in Richton Park. Bridget, Nashville, good morning. BDN, that's Bridget, right? Northwest Indiana. Isaac Watson, good morning, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you last Friday at that meeting. All right, yeah, Bridget, okay. We got the coffee going, we got the caffeine moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got the juicer going. Drinking some green stuff this morning. Dallas, good morning. Columbia, South Carolina. Let's wait just another few seconds. Erlene, good morning. Good morning, Erlene. I saw your sister Ethel on here a minute ago. Tammy Holloway, good morning. Apple cider vinegar tea. Mmm, I don't know about that one. I'm, I'm gonna stick with the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Maple Glen, Pennsylvania. Sounds like an interesting place. God bless you guys. You're meditating and you're studying. Okay, well, that's a good thing. Study to show yourself approved, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning. <clears throat> All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Howes. Welcome to Leaderscope. We're ready to move uh, this morning, get your day off to a good start. Uh, this evening, for those of you in the local area, we have our Cornerstone Institute starts at 7 p.m. And we are running our classes on blended families, single parenting. We have a class on the book of James and a class on economic empowerment. And that class is focusing on entrepreneurs that God is raising up. Such an important piece uh, in kingdom activity in our communities right now, the, ri the raising up of entrepreneurs. That must happen. It's got to happen. We need entrepreneurship rising up out of local churches to impact our local communities, to build some new strip malls, to revitalize uh, economic death and, and darth and dryness. We, we want to raise up the economic uh, standards in our communities, and the kingdom of God is designed to do just that. If we can get our business people activated and moving, we can see some great things happening economically in our community. So we want to see that happen. So we have the class on economic empowerment. 
uh, Blended Family, Single Parenting, and the Book of James. And this is week number six, so that means this is our final week of classes in this section of classes. Next week, we start with three weeks of everybody together. Then we go into another session of six weeks of classes. So uh, good things coming up. So if you can make it tonight, we'd love to have you 7 p.m. for Cornerstone Institute. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about leadership influence. You know, we have, we have been going through a time in the church when we've been really good at doing church. We've been really good at blessing people. We've been really good at laying hands on people and uh, releasing healing and releasing prophetic words, releasing deliverance. Uh, we've been pretty good at that. We've been doing well with that. And, and that is a good thing. It's not negative at all. It's a good thing. But at the same time, we have neglected the raising up of disciples. We've neglected leadership development. And I'm speaking to myself as well as you. This is something that's been neglected in general, across the board, in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. And so we have come to realize now that our church environments are full of those who are serving and those who are uh, following to one level or another, but but we're not seeing the raising up of leaders like we should be, like we should be. So um, we've got to understand that followers watch us, servants will help us, but leaders are really the ones that get things done. So we have to be raising up more leaders. We have to be doing a better job at discipling people and raising up leaders. Now, discipling is all about following. <clears throat> Remember, in, in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus came across uh, his first disciples that he followed, he called, first of all, Simon and Andrew, and then James and John. And to both of those uh, sets of brothers who were in the fishing business, he said, I want you to come and follow me. Come and follow me. Now, following Jesus, as they were called to do so, was not just a matter of direction. It wasn't just a matter of him going a certain direction and say, come and go with me in a direction. But it was more about an example. It was more about an example that he was going to set. He was literally saying, follow me or follow my manner of life. Follow my manner of life. Come and spend time with me. Come and hang out with me. See how I live. Watch and see how I think, how I process. Watch and see how I uh, handle difficulties, how I handle problems. Watch and see how I handle successes. Watch and see how I live my life. Use my life as an example. Follow me. Tap into that and then begin to develop uh, yourself, begin to develop yourself. So follow me is about an example. It's about a manner of life, a manner of life. He said, follow me and I will make you to be fishers of men. If you follow me, I'm gonna make you to be something. So as you follow Jesus, as you follow Jesus, you are giving him the right to make you to be what he wants you to be. Now, not only do we follow Jesus, but it's perfectly biblical for us to follow human beings as well. Remember, Paul the Apostle said, follow me, imitate me, track my way of life, even as I follow Christ. So Paul was giving permission for people to follow him and his leadership. And as they followed him, they would be learning from his manner of life. He would be pouring something into them. He would be imparting something of his own life and his own experience into their hearts, into their lives. So it's, it's legitimate to follow another human being. It's legitimate to fall, follow someone like possibly your pastor or your uh, spiritual father, your spiritual mother, whoever is in place in your life that you can follow. It's biblical as long as they are following Christ. But again, it's not a matter of getting direction. 
It's a matter of following their way of life. It's a matter of example. And we're tapping into the example that they are setting. Now, as you become mature, as you grow and develop in the Lord, people are going to follow you. They're going to follow you. And that's where your leadership influence kicks into action. Now, there are a number of reasons why people will want to follow you. One of them, and this is probably the most basic elemental level of leadership influence, is your discovery that people will follow you because of your title or because of a position that you hold. That is really the lowest level of uh, leadership influence. It is very limited, very limited. They're only coming to you, they're only attracted to you because of a title, because of a position. It doesn't mean that they're going to be getting a whole lot from you because all they're after is your title or your position. So you've got to realize that. It's a low level of influence. Another level of influence that's, that's a little bit better than title or position is your uh, winning track record. If you have a winning track record, if you've achieved certain things, if you've accomplished some things, people will be attracted to that. People will want to tap into your level of skill, your level of expertise, and therefore they will come and they will follow you because you have achieved some things, because you have been successful at something. So they're going to want to learn to do what you did. And so they will follow you because of that. Now, another level of leadership influence is your heart. People are going to follow you because of your heart. Now, this is where we really begin to step it up in this discipleship element. People will discover something about you. They will discover something that's in your internal makeup. They will discover something that is in your heart that will inspire them to want to hang out with you. They will want to be with you. They're going to want to tap into whatever it is that you have developed in your heart that God has given you, and it's moving, it's developing, it's growing in your heart. They want to know that you believe in what you are doing. And they're going to tap into that as a place of influence for their own lives, for their own lives. They will be discovering your innermost motivation. They will be discovering what drives you. They will be discovering what leads you in your walk with God. And they're going to want to tap into that and, and pull on that and learn from that. That's another level of leadership influence. Then another reason why people will follow you is because you have shown that you believe in them. People want somebody to believe in them. And so as a leader, when you believe in people who are choosing to follow you, it's taking your leadership, uh, your leadership influence to a whole other place. It's taking it to another level. This is really the empowerment level because people are going to feel like you believe in them because you are doing something to empower them. This is where you see something in that person that's following you that, that they have never seen in themselves. You see something in them that they have not recognized, and you begin to identify that, and you begin to pour vision into that. You begin to put your faith on that, and you are helping them unlock their identity. You're helping them to discover their purpose, and, and you're moving them into another place of development and strength and growth. And so they're going to follow your leadership and you're going to have influence in their lives because you believe in them. Then another level of leadership influence is found when people really believe that you care about them. People want to know that you care for them. They, they really want to know that you care for them more than they want to tap into what you know. <laughs> Your caring for them is going to go a long way towards having influence in their lives. We've got to remember that, that uh, ministry is really about people. It's really about people. You can never forget that. You know, some people say, well, the ministry would be great if it wasn't for people. 
Well, you know, that's, that's kind of a ignorant thing to say because you can't have ministry without people. Who are you going to minister to? Ministry is all about people and people want to know that you care about them. You are in, an encourager. You encourage them. You strengthen them. You add to their life instead of taking away from their life. You, you see what they can become. And therefore, you show that you care about helping them get to that place. When they're experiencing losses, when they are going through times of trial, difficulty, you show that you care for them. And that's going to go a long way to building up leadership influence in their life. Another level of leadership influence and the way that you can really impact people that are following you is when their life is being changed. Because they're hanging out with you, because they're spending time with you, something about their life is really being changed. When you're, reach, when you're helping them reach a goal, when you're helping them achieve things that they have only dreamed about, when you're resurrecting their dreams from the dead, you are really, really, really helping them get their life changed. You know, remember when Paul said we have a whole lot of teachers, but we don't have that many fathers. The difference between a teacher and a father is that a teacher will help you get all of your information right, you get all your ducks in a row. But a father will help you get your heart right. A father will help you get your heart right. So when you are acting like a spiritual father, a spiritual mother, the people that are following you are really going to be impacted. Their lives are going to be changed because of your influence in their hearts and lives. Another level of leadership influence is um, connected destiny, so to speak, where people recognize that some way or another, their destiny is connected to your destiny. Your destiny, your purpose, your success is helping them see their destiny and there is a connection there. There's a connection there that will help them develop. It's discipleship. There would never be an Elisha without an Elijah. There would never be a Peter without a Jesus. There would never be a Paul without a Barnabas. Remember, Barnabas went and sought out Saul of Tarsus and spent time with him and helped him develop in his spiritual walk. There would never be a Joshua without a Moses. There would never be a Ruth without a Naomi. These are all scriptural examples of connected destinies. And as people are following you and your leadership, your influence will be great with them because they're going to sense that there is a destiny connection with you. It's going to be like, uh, like Ruth told Naomi, my people shall be your people. You, excuse me, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you go, that's where I'm going. You, you have that connected destiny with the people that are following. That's, that's so, so crucial, so very, very important. And, and then another level of leadership influence that's going to pour out of your life into those that are following you is the aspect of shared vision. Eventually, the vision that you've been carrying in your life is going to become the vision that your followers are seeing as well. Eventually, they're going to take full ownership of that vision. And they become a co-laborer with you a co-laborer in seeing that vision fulfilled and seeing the vision come to pass. That's going to happen as you spend time with people, as you have conversations with people, as you pray with people, as you share the word of God with people, as you prophesy to people, as you have those one-on-one -on -one experiences with them, eventually there will be a time when your vision becomes their vision. And that's where leadership influence becomes extremely, extremely powerful and effective. So I, I want to encourage us today, not just to do church well, not just to bless people, but to really move into this realm of discipleship and raising up followers 
and really move into this realm of seeing leaders developed. We've got to get better at developing leaders, seeing leaders developed through our lives and through our ministries. It's got to happen. So be encouraged with that today. Look around you. Somebody's following you. Somebody's wanting to connect with you. Go out and have a cup of coffee with them. Take them out to breakfast. Take them out to lunch. Spend some time with them. Take them through an interview. My friend Kevin Leal says, you get the interview when you do an interview. I like that. You're going to find out where their heart is. You're going to find out their desires. You're going to find out their gifting. You're going to find out what their passion is. You're going to find out what God has truly called them to do. So give that some attention, okay? we got to get better at raising up leaders. Thank you for being on with me today. I appreciate it. I love you. I'm grateful for you. I know you're going to have a great day today. So today I declare greatness in your life. You're carrying the seed of greatness. I declare that you have open doors in front of you. You have opportunities today. Divine connections, divine resources. You have favor with God and man. And I declare now that any sickness, any disease trying to grip your body is now broken in the name of Jesus. I declare healing, wholeness, health, strength to your body, soundness of mind, stability of emotions. Today is going to be a good day. Be encouraged, be blessed, be strengthened. You be raised up as a leader and you raise up leaders through the gift that God has given to you, through your character, through your integrity. Raise up leaders and see them thrive in the body of Christ. God bless you. Have a great day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon.